We have a new automated citation and referencing feature on Protolist. So let's go through how you can set that up and start to automatically pull the citation information from the papers that you're adding into Protolist. As in previous workflows, I'm going to set up a table for papers. I'm going to add a new page and then select type table, give it the title papers. And then on Protolist, all new tables come with a name, subpages, and atoms, columns as standard. I'm going to swap this sub pages property for a citation property. And to do that, you click in the header of the column and it'll expand the property options. And then I'm going to go to this drop down and scroll through until I come across citation. I'm going to update the title to citation. And then underneath the property title, there are a few different options of referencing styles that you can choose from. We have more on the way. If there are any that you particularly would want, do please let us know in the comments or get in touch with us. I'm going to swap it to Harvard for today. And now when we upload any papers into this table, the citation will automatically be extracted and added into the citation column next to each paper. So to add your papers onto Protolist, you can go straight to this new drop down arrow and select file. Then you'll be prompted to select a file from your file explorer or you can drag and drop a bunch of papers into a table and they will upload. So I'm just gonna drag and drop three papers into this table. Okay, and after a few moments, the citations have been extracted and automatically added into the citations property here. But the name will be whatever the PDF file was called. So if you want to change the name, you will need to edit this manually. But just like in the other workflows, you can open up your paper and then as you're reading through the paper, you can highlight any of the info that stands out to you, capture it as an atom so that it's lifted out of the page and saved within your Protolist workspace so that you can view it and search for it outside of this source file. And you can do this for as many bits of info as you want while you're reading the paper. At any point while you have the paper open, you can view all of the atoms you've captured by heading to this atoms menu button in the top right of the page. This will open up a list of all of the atoms that you've captured from this paper down the right hand side of your screen. And similarly, if you jump back into your papers table, I'm going to close this menu using that button there. You will see in the atoms column of the table, the atom that I captured in this paper is displaying. And this will happen for all of the atoms that you capture from any of the papers within your workspace. If you wanted to change the referencing style, you can head to the property options and then use the drop down to change it to whatever style you would like to have. And it will update. For every citation that is generated within this table, there are options. If you hover over the citation, a three dot button will appear in the top right of the property box. If you click on this, there are three options. One for you to manually edit the citation, another for you to copy the citation to your clipboard, and another for you to automatically extract the citation info from the file. So this is an option for any papers that you may have already uploaded into your Protolist workspace that you want to retrieve the citation info from. And these are the citations that will be added into the references section whenever you add an atom into a text editor page. So let's just go through that quickly. So if I add a new page into this workspace, set it up as a text editor page, first year report as an example. Um, I'm then going to open up my papers table in split screen and then jump back to that first year report. So I've got them open side by side. And then as I'm in a text editor page, I can drag and drop my atoms into the page. And let me slide that open a bit wider again. As you can see, when I drag and drop that atom into the page, the atom text is dropped into the page and a numbered citation is also created as well as a references section at the bottom of this page. And the reference that displays is the same as the citation in the corresponding table for my papers. Next to the references section title, you can toggle the references section on and off. So if I turn that off, this little pop-up tells me that I can turn the references back on in the page settings, which is this three dot button in the top right of a page. I can go down and turn the show references back on and my references will appear again. If you wanted to make any changes to each of the references that appear in your references section, if you hover over them, you can click on this three dot button that appears, and then you have those same options as described earlier for the citations property. 
edit the citation, copy to clipboard, attempt auto extraction from file. If we open up the edit citation option, there's a load of different properties that you can edit and add to, as well as the options to import data through uploading files or pasting DOIs to pull the info from the web. If I close this split screen by using the cross in the top right of the side of the split screen that I want to close, we'll be able to see how the citation will take you back to where you lifted that atom out of the page in the source PDF. And so these citations are a direct link back to the original source of your atom. So you can check the phrasing and make sure that you aren't plagiarizing, as well as gather further context from the original paper. And so that's how you can make use of the citations property in tables to import the citation information as you are uploading papers into your workspace. And these citations are what pull through into your references sections if you are using your atoms to start writing anything in your workspace.